Who do you think I consider to be the best ball striker in history? Of course, Ben Hogan. Ben Hogan. Ben Hogan. So Mickey Wright and Sam Snead, I think, are, are right up there, but uh, Hogan was the best. So let me ask you guys a question. Can you imagine seeing Ben Hogan, Sam Snead, Byron Nelson, and Judd McSpaden, Jug McSpaden, all in one event? Well, this man did oh. in person. What a weekend. I have got so much to tell you guys about. I don't even know where to start. But that was my friend Kevin McClusker who came in from Boise, Idaho. And he wanted to work on his swing. And he's always hit the ball left to right. He said he came out of the, the birth canal left to right. That it's just always been his shot. Um, but with a little work on his weight shift and... Uh, a little open kinetic chain work, and all of a sudden he's hitting a beautiful draw and picked up about 20 yards. But uh, we'll get back to his Hogan story in just a minute, but I've got my own crazy golf story to tell you guys. So we had the intensive. A wonderful group of people came out, all different levels. Uh, we had two people from Canada, one from Toronto, one from Whistler, British Columbia, Boise, Idaho, Phoenix, San Francisco, and uh, a few locals as well. And uh, we all got down to business. It was such a wonderful group of guys. I got to tell you, these guys, everybody's serious, everybody focused and working hard, and we all made a tremendous amount of progress. I made a tremendous amount of progress. I have to give a shout out to my main man, Tom Swanston. Uh, Tom really worked with me on my mental game. And I've been saying for the last few weeks that this is this is where I've really got to get a, a stronger uh, approach to the game. And Tom helped me definitely move in that direction. So, so we had this great weekend. Tom's talking to me about scoring and letting go of the mechanics on the golf course and becoming super target oriented. That was a really nice fade. And uh, I'll tell you, Tom really did a wonderful job of helping me to think about the game a little bit differently. And, uh, and so I had no intention to play in the little tournament that I was hosting because, I mean, it's hard enough to play the game of golf, but to play in a tournament while hosting an event, I was afraid it might be too much for me, but Tom encouraged me to play in my own tournament. Well, I pulled a tiger and a jack. I won my own tournament. Mine was uh, a little bit smaller. But nonetheless, I had the jitters, the nerves, everything. I was scared to death. I didn't want to embarrass myself. I had all the demons I had to fight. And I shot 74. I birdied two of the last three holes. I also won the long drive contest. And um, it was one of the most significant days of my swing evolution, the whole journey. It was it was a thrill. I, I was, my head was swimming for two days because um, it was a challenge for me. It was very difficult. You know, I've got a lot of, uh, a lot of emotions and, and deep seated fears about the game of golf. And, uh, but I made a big leap forward this weekend. So uh, at any rate, I'd like to thank Tom. I'd like to thank all the great guys that came out this weekend. It was such a wonderful time. And let's, finish up with this great Hogan story from my friend, Kevin McClusker. So this happened in 1970. I was probably 17 or 18. Jug McSpaden owned the golf course called Dubs Dread, which is just outside of Kansas City. Now, he was less famous than some of the others, but really was a very accomplished golfer. Decided to get more into golf course architecture Dubs Dread, he would invite his friends to come and play exhibitions. Well, that was his circle of friends. He finished second to Byron Nelson many, many times when Byron Nelson had his streak going. And they, the two of them were known as the Gold Dust Twins because they finished one and two so often. Just, just so you guys know, uh, Jug McSpaden won 17 PGA Tour events. So that's nothing to sneeze at, sure. you know. So. What year was it and what happened? 1970 at Dubs Dread, Sneed and Hogan played against Nelson and McSpaden, 18 holes, best ball. Uh, Sneed and Hogan won one up on the 18th hole. Now, the amazing thing to me was, of course, I was far less knowledgeable about golf then, but 
I mean, they played from the fairways and hit the greens in regulation. Uh, it was just pure golf, all four of them. So it was just amazing. So your memory is of outstanding accuracy. Well, it was Ben Hogan then. I mean, he would be, now these were the times when people were hitting their second shots into the green with four and three irons and sometimes two and even a one iron. And, you know, Hogan would just rifle the ball that would go out and after about 150 yards, it would climb up a little bit and then turn gently to the right and hit and stick. Wow. That's pretty <laughs> crazy, right? Yeah, it's fantastic. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, could you, could you uh, sense any difference between them though? Was, was Hogan hitting it slightly differently to the others? Well, you know, Sneed's trajectory overall was higher. Right. And Nelson, his shots just seemed like bullets. They would go like a laser. And Hogan's would be that, that gentle tape. Right. So Sneed tended to hit high and the ball would come down soft. And McSpaden, you just kind of, you hardly noticed him because you're watching others so much, but he was always on the green. Right. Always there. Could you, you'd been playing golf for a while when you saw them. Yeah. Right there. Was there a sound difference to the strike as well? You know, I love coming back to that because before the round started, they, we went to a practice tee like this and it was not a huge crowd of people, so you could get pretty close. And that was, you know, this was 1970, whatever year it is now, how many years later, I remember the sound when Hogan hit the ball. Wow. Yeah. Auditory <laughs> memory. Uh, you powerful. know, people comment about that. Can you describe it in any way? Well, it was, it was a soft sound. You, you, you felt like he was hitting some kind of a vegetable. <laughs> Instead of this pinging metallic rip. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. bizarre. <laughs> Like he's just like smashing it on the face a yeah, little bit smash, longer. Smashing it on the face a bit longer. Yeah. So. Wow. Just Hogan, like a Hogan hit cabbages. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. So let's cut to the chase. Here's my old golf swing. And here's my new golf swing. Five years ago, I started a YouTube channel and I wanted to improve my golf swing by using Ben Hogan's five lessons. Well, guess what? It worked. And along the way, I picked up over 8 million views on YouTube and I learned how to shoot under par. Unbelievable, right? Well, the great news is I have a brand new instructional video called The Hogan Code. In this video, I break down everything that I learned over my long journey to learn to swing like Ben Hogan. And now you can learn the very same techniques that I use to become the golfer I always wanted to be.